Hello, my name is Stephanie Patterson. I am the assistant professor of bassoon at the Schwab School of Music at Columbus State University and the director of the Schwab Summer Music Festival. And I'm very excited to get to talk to you today um, because we have some fun topics, including vibrato. And I love talking about vibrato. I know it's sort of a mysterious thing because it happens inside of us and we don't always, like we can't see it, you know, it just happens. And so, um, I'm not going to lie, my first teacher actually said, you just vibrate, you just, you know, you just do it. So, you know, for a while, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I want to start with, um, there are different kinds of vibrato. Um, one of the kinds is jaw vibrato, where you actually move your jaw, blah, 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 blah. And I can demonstrate that um, on the bassoon. We don't actually use this on bassoon, but I do want to demonstrate so you know what it looks like. So you might be able to hear why we don't use it. It makes the pitch change a lot. Um, single reed players, saxophonists, and some clarinetists do use jaw vibrato, but they do it much better, and they don't have as much fluctuation on their instruments. So um, we don't use jaw vibrato. We use what's called, um, people call it diaphragm vibrato, which is actually not what it is, because our diaphragm is not really a muscle we can control. We can, we, it moves. We talk about using it for um, air support. It moves when we move our other muscles to breathe, the diaphragm goes down and then comes back up. So you might, you know, think, oh, diaphragm vibrato, it's like my diaphragm is doing this. That's not totally what's happening. Um, it, it's actually kind of in your, your chest cavity area and some for some people it's in your throat. Um, but it is like an airstream vibrato. So it's like little pulses um, in your airstream. So um, that being said, people do call it diaphragm or throat vibrato, not jaw vibrato. So um, the purpose of vibrato is generally to add expression to music. So if you think about um, who uses vibrato that, that you can think of right off the bat, you might think of singers right away, and you might think of like uh, string players, like violinists. Um, um, and then, you know, you might start to think, okay, well, flute players and oboe players use a lot of vibrato, um, saxophone players and bassoonists generally use vibrato. So it's something that we start learning, you know, around middle and high school and then sort of get better at in college um, and if we keep playing. So um, all of these people who use vibrato use it for expression. You can use it to make a long note more interesting than just, you know, holding a long note. Ba is not very interesting. Um, but if you can add some vibrato to it, which I'm not a singer, so I'm not going to do that. But if you can imagine that note sort of um, growing, and I can demonstrate here, if you just play a long note, right? Not very interesting. There's not a lot of music happening, right? But if you use some vibrato and you add it in as you play, it can make the note feel like it's going somewhere or like the music is moving. Even though you're just staying on one note, the vibrato really kind of, it, it adds like a sparkle or a shimmer to the sound. So that's, that's the goal. Now, keep in mind that if you haven't started to learn vibrato, it's going to take a while and you're not going to sound, you know, like the best professional musicians right away. You, pro you might actually sound kind of funny at first, like most things on the bassoon. So um, you have to be willing to be a little silly and I will try and demonstrate some of the silly things you can do so you feel a little less silly doing them. Um, so we're going to start without the instrument and um, we're going to start by saying ha 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 like you're laughing and if you've ever played that game you know where you like lie on the ground and you put your head on someone else's stomach and then you start laughing and it makes your head move that's what you want to feel so if you put your hands on your stomach and you say ha 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 with like a lot of force you can feel your abdominal muscles move right and and you might think of these as like your air support muscles so if you say ha 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 that's like the beginning of learning vibrato um and i'm going to upload a little a handout that you can look at that has this exercise on it. So from there, from this ha, 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 and I know you're all trying this at home, so good. You're going to connect them because we don't, you know, when you vibrate on the instrument, you're not just going ha, 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 or it would sound something like this. Right? That sounds like a, like a duck, but not a good kind of duck. Um, so not Swan Lake ducks. Um, now that I've broken the ice on sounding silly, I hope you all feel more comfortable sounding silly as we practice vibrato. So it's not just that, 
we're going to connect them now. So we end up with like a ha 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 ha. If you can see, I'm still very um, overdoing it with my with my diaphragm, with my uh, muscles in my abdomen. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Um, feel free to overdo it at first to kind of figure out where those muscles are because you might not, you know, use them for a lot of other things. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, but, um, except for playing and doing vibrato. So um, you might notice that as you do that, ha, 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 you don't want the, like if you have peaks and valleys, you don't want the valleys to get too soft or on the instrument, they won't make any sound. So so I wanna keep my A's present, but not as loud as the, the peaks. So ha, 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 is maybe more, um, more what I'm talking about. So now that you've practiced that a few times, I want you to try it with your instrument. Um, and you want to pick a note you like, but maybe not the most extreme of registers. So I don't think we should be doing this on a low B flat, um, probably not on a high E, and I mean the really high E. And even the tenor register, it gets tricky with vibrato because the, the notes are so flexible with pitch. So I would pick something in the staff, something like a C or a B flat, maybe even half whole G would be good. Um, I'm going to do it on a C, and what I want you to, to think of doing is quarter notes, um, and I, I'm going to start with 60 on my metronome, because I like 60, it's like my, you know, it's like the heartbeat, it's where you can start a lot of things, so if you can hear that, I'm going to play quarter note vibrato so that the peak is on the tick of the metronome. So it's basically like I'm doing a little hairpin crescendo diminuendo on every beat. I'm really just thinking of it as dynamic at this point. So um, I would just practice that for a little while. Get get really good at that. And what, what usually happens at this stage and what you might be seeing if you're playing along is that you might not get very much fluctuation because we don't want to sound bad, right? We don't want to um, do something that's going to sound ugly. So you might just be really careful and only get something like this. Okay, so you can kind of hear the vibrato, but it's not, I'm not really engaging the muscles and I'm not pushing myself, you know, to the edge of um, what I can do. So I want you to be really extreme. Think of going from like piano to fortissimo and back to piano on quarter notes. So let's try that one more time. You can go ahead, you can play with me if you want, because that is also a great way to learn vibrato is to play with somebody else who's doing it at the same speed. So here's our 60. I'll count us off. One two, three. Good, okay. So when you get comfortable at um, quarter notes, and I would say if you wanna know if you're doing it, pull out your phone, record yourself on a couple of them and listen back because the recording device won't lie. You'll hear if you're getting a dynamic change or if not. Um, and if you're having a big pitch change, you know, if you're going sharp and then flat and then sharp and then flat while you're doing this, that's okay. Um, you might try to minimize it by really keeping your air support going um, for those valleys, but don't worry too much about that right now. Um, one other thing you might want to look at is if you if you can record yourself with video, notice that you're not moving your jaw, okay? Because you don't want to be, oh, 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 oh um, and actually be doing jaw vibrato, okay? So um, when you get good at quarter notes, you're gonna move on to eighth notes at the same tempo. So I would say, let's put it at 60. Um, and we're gonna do like um, one whole measure of quarter notes and then a whole measure of eighth notes. Okay, so I'll count you off. One, two, three. So the eighth notes are a lot harder, aren't they? Because suddenly you have to move much quicker. And if that is too quick for you, you can turn it down to like 40 and do eighth notes there because it's still faster than quarters at 60, but not as fast as eighth notes at 60. Um, okay, and then when you move them together, it pushes you to speed up right away. Now the next step, you guessed it, is triplets. Um, and I really like triplets for vibrato because it makes sort of a round forward momentum feeling. Um, so once we get to triplets, we're actually going to stay with triplets and we're going to up our tempo as we continue to work. Um, now, I'm going to put all of this information into one video, but I'm not saying you should be at triplets 
at 100 by the end of this, you know, five minute video. You're going to be at triplets at 100 maybe in a couple of weeks after practicing this every day. You're not going to get there right away unless you've been working on it before or you're just a natural. Um, so don't be frustrated if you're still on quarter notes or really slow eighth notes at the end of your first time practicing vibrato. It takes time and um, luckily most bassoonists are pretty motivated because it's a hard instrument. So I believe that you can do it. You just have to put in the time and be okay with sounding silly for a little while. Okay, so that being said, let's try some triplets. Um, if you're not quite ready, just do your best or listen and get an idea. Um, let's do, we'll do a measure of quarter notes, a measure of eighth notes, and a measure of triplets. Okay, so one, two, three, And if you notice when I go to triplets, the motion is no longer very like a, a strong motion here because that would be so hard to go, oh, bo, 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 bo. you know, it's like a, doing a Pilates workout or something. Most of you probably don't know what that is. That's okay. It's like doing cr crunches for, you know, however long you're doing vibrato. The motion's actually going to move sort of up into like your, your chest area, maybe even your throat. And that's okay. That's, that's where we want it to be. We don't want to be just doing vibrato from our abdomens this whole time because it's, we're going to get really tired really fast. Um, so after you've been working on this for a while, the next step is to take it at, in triplets at 60 and then up your tempo, like 72, 80, 90, 100, keep going from there. I wouldn't go much past, you know, 108, 120. You don't really need to vibrate that fast as a bassoonist. Yeah. You don't really need to, you know, that is 108, it's triplets, that's pretty much as fast as I'm going to get unless I'm playing something really modern and, and crazy and I want to have a really intense sound. So um, I, would, I would up the speed and practice, you can even up the speed and practice going from quarter notes to eighth notes to triplets. Um, that's a really great exercise. And if you're getting more advanced, you might want to turn on your tuner and make sure that you're staying in tune as you do this vibrato. Okay. They always say, do your tuning note without vibrato, which is good advice, but you do want to practice your vibrato with a tuner because when you play in an ensemble or a solo piece, you want to be in tune when you're vibrating. Um, and as you get down the road to that kind of an exercise, you also want to practice turning on the vibrato and turning it off because you don't want it to be like, oh, I'm going to flip a switch and all of a sudden I'm vibrating and then I'm going to flip a switch and then I'm not. You want it to sort of ease into the sound and then ease out. So I'm going to show you one more exercise you can do where you do like a long tone hairpin and as you crescendo, you're going to increase the speed and the, um, what's this called? The, the size of your vibrato. And then as you diminuendo, you're going to decrease the speed, um, and the size of the waves of the vibrato. So it's going to be something like this. Um, of course I would do it with the tuner and the metronome. So I'm going to set it back to 60. I'm just going to do it on C again. Okay, so you might notice that I wasn't really measuring the vibrato. I wasn't thinking triplets, eighth notes, um, quarter notes. I was just thinking, as I get louder, I'm going to intensify my vibrato. As I get softer, I'm going to slow it down and make it narrower, um, which is a great use of vibrato. You can pretend like you have a much larger dynamic range if you add vibrato as you're getting louder um, or, or take it away as you're getting softer. So that's another exercise to do. If you're having trouble not doing it measured, it's totally fine to do quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, even sixteenths when you get really loud, and then back it off in a measured way. So this brings me to adding vibrato to music, which is, um, you know, it's easy to say, but it's another thing to say, okay, you know, you've worked on it in the practice room. Now go ahead and add it to music because, um, one, we're much more comfortable sounding kind of bad or silly in the practice room or in our rooms practicing than we are when we actually go to play a, a, an etude or a solo piece or in, in band or in our ensemble. So, um, it's important to just jump right in and try it and, and to try it in your practice and be okay with it sounding 
eh, not so great at first, but then get more used to doing it. So I have a, an etude I wrote for, actually my um, dissertation um, had a, a book of etudes and I have one on vibrato that I'm gonna play for you. And what I did is I gave the vibrato speed in little notes above the long notes. So uh, like for example, the first long note is three beats long and I said, play vibrato in quarter notes. Um, it's quiet, it's the beginning of the piece, so I don't want a whole lot of vibrato, but it's a good place to kind of practice easing it. And then later we go to eighth notes when it gets a little louder, a little more intense. Um, and even later, some triplets. And then there's just a fun section where I like to, to vary the vibrato. And at the very end, you get to do um, a little vibrato ad lib, which means sort of at your leisure. So you get to pick. You get to decide, am I going to do it measured? Am I going to do it um, in triplets? How do I want to play it? So, um, or unmeasured, totally up to you. So right now, I'm going to play this, and I'll show you the music, and I'll, I'll put it up in the folder if you want to take a look at it. But it's one example of how to add vibrato in um, as you're um, as you're learning to put it into your music. Okay, so hopefully that was a good example of how you can start to add in vibrato first measured and then making it a little less measured. And if you have any additional questions, you can definitely contact me um, and I'm happy to explain if anything was confusing. So thanks for listening. Happy practicing.